we're only going to be out here for a minute. <coughs> the February 22nd, 2011 special meeting of the Hawthorne City Council is called to order with all members present. Council Member English. Well, she's in the back. Well, we, well then we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Olivia Valentine. Please stand. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, would you please read the guidelines for oral communication? Hey, Angie. Pursuant to the Government Code Section 54954.3, the public uh, shall directly address the legislative body concerning items that have been described in the notice of special meeting. Is there anyone who'd like to speak on this topic? Seeing no one, I declare oral communications close ordered. I will now recess the city council meeting, conduct a closed session for conference pursuant to the agenda. We are in recess. The City Council meeting is called to order. We met in closed session for a conference pursuant to the agenda. Yes, we had a, a closed session uh, on the special meeting agenda, and we've, we're going to continue the closed session on the regular meeting agenda. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there was only one item on this one was item A, and I think it was miss. It doesn't, doesn't mean considering a hiring freeze. It was a report to the City Council regarding new positions that are being proposed that I'd like to have a full report what those positions are going to be where the funding is going to come from and how are they going to be broken down because I've heard different stories and I know this body talked about um, holding the line so if there's no objection it's holding those two positions until we can get a full report it's item a on the special uh, hold the positions yeah and then if they need to do any work on those positions or anything, they can temporarily hire a, an outside. There are two different, there are two different positions that can come back and we can get a report on that. I'd like to have the um, support of the council. Okay. Russell, do we need to vote on it? Sure. All right. Please vote. Vote reflects mayor and city council voting yes. Is there anything further if not adjourn uh, this meeting? The February 22nd, 2011, regular meeting of the Hawthorne City Council, Community Redevelopment Agency, Parking Authority, Finance Authority, and Housing Authority are called to order jointly and concurrently with all members present. Deacon Tom from St. Joseph Church will be giving the invocation tonight and then will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Hermina Balboa. Will everyone please stand? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we have sitting before you this evening the selfless leaders of our city of Hawthorne community who will soon be making decisions on behalf of the citizens of this great city. Lord, please enlighten their hearts. Give them light and strength to know your will. Guide them by your wisdom. Support them by your power. Enable them to uphold the rights of all. Do not allow them to be misled by ignorance or corrupted by fear or favor. Unite them in the bond of love and keep them faithful to all that is true. Allow them to temper justice with love so that all their decisions may be pleasing to you and earn them the reward of good and faithful servants. We ask this in your name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Thank you. Councilwoman English has a presentation on the agenda. I think you would like to do Locks for Love first? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. It's great to see many of you here today, especially our families and children who participated in our recent Locks of Love Foundation, a day of giving. And through that, um, the city of Hawthorne participated in partnership with Evelyn Diaz. Where are you, Evelyn? It's not here. Evelyn Diaz is um, an employee of the city of Hawthorne through our um, animals, uh, uh, animal, animal control services. And she wanted to participate um, to show support for her mother who um, had suffered cancer. And she came up with the idea, but most importantly, it was an idea of community, because this is not one story, but it's many stories. And I also want to continue to acknowledge Terry Lubinick, our city treasurer, that participated in this last year and, and grew out his hair, and at the end had that cut and donated so that wigs could be made for families and children uh, suffering from cancer. And that was just such an empowering gesture. And it's today that I want to honor those folks that participated on February 12th and who gave of themselves through volunteerism and also the stylists, those folks who cut hair on a regular basis, who gave of themselves that day, one day, to come out and cut hair, but to make sure that the folks weren't just getting their hair cut and walking away, at least trying to better it so that they can walk away confident. Excuse me, walk away confident knowing that uh, they got a haircut with that. Uh, and so today we're, we're giving honor to those folks that were part of that. And I don't know where the certificates of recognition are. They're, they're on their way. They're on their way. We maybe should have held off. Well, here, you know what? If you want to wait a few minutes? Uh, we have the car show um, video we wanted to share. So we'll kill a little time. Okay, so if you just bear with me for a moment and we'll come back to you. They're here. Rosalinda. I'm so yes. sorry. Thank you for your patience. We're, the certificates are here now, so I'm going to continue with the presentation. I have a certificate in recognition that reads in part, be it known to all assembled here and others who behold these presents, that formal expression has been made as evident by this document, a certificate of recognition presented to Evelyn Diaz in grateful appreciation for your tireless efforts and dedication in helping to plan, coordinate, and support the first annual Hawthorne Locks of Love Foundation event, Saturday, February 12th, 2011, at the Hawthorne Memorial Center. Because of your efforts, more than 40 individuals, which a lot of you are here tonight, donated their hair to Locks of Love for making wigs to be given to young cancer patients. Presented this day, the 22nd day of February, 2011, City of Hawthorne. And this, this is gonna go to Evelyn Diaz. And if you are here tonight, as I read your name, could you please come forward and stand here center? If I could get 
our city treasurer to open the gate here and allow everyone to come through. Certificate of recognition presented to Kimberly Diaz. <laughs> Grateful appreciation of your support and participation in the first annual Hawthorne Locks of Love Foundation. Thank you on behalf of the city council and the city of Hawthorne. This is one of our youngest, youngest participants. Uh, Adela Ariello, Ariella. <laughs> Maria Silva. Eleanor Ramos. <laughs> Diane Carmura. Harishi, is Harishi here? Harishi, Taylor, Baudet, Lilani George, Elena DiCastro, Evelyn Hernandez, Michelle Arias, Rosalva Martinez, John Yuska, Brianna Sanchez, Mirana Hernandez, Aretha Alvarez, Yasenia Knight, Rachel Sizzler, Alma Sanchez, Sherry Foster, Patty Bird, Virginia Lenore, Sonia Barron, Shannon Mc McMurray, Sandra Esmesqua, we got Tretino Drisky, Decreasy, excuse me, Decreasy, our city clerk's son, uh, Gilly, what is this, Parf Parfield, Perfield, Yahira Kuaki, I hope I'm pronouncing it. Cynthia Chrysler, Crystal Rosebot, Brittany Sanchez. Um, let's see who else. Tracy Ablisman, Ricardo Calvaro, or Scott, oh, Galvan. Ricardo Galvan. <laughs> Josie Laboy, Paulette Perez, Elena Laboy. Brian Rutherford, Angelo Cruz, Angel Ortega, Sylvia Sanchez, Mira Padilla, Terry Lubinick, our city treasurer. We got Matt Lawrence, Nicole Viamonte, Dante Short, Heather Smith, Anna Policcio. And if I didn't pronounce your names, I apologize in advance. We're going to do a, a, a big picture right over here in the center. Because the lady wants this camera. Yeah, um, we had promised some of the hairstylists yes. some DVDs. Yes. Can we make sure, Tom, We're gonna can we make sure the stylists get some DVDs? We'll give them to Evelyn, and then she'll give them to you. How's that? Okay. Thank you. Let me There's Evelyn. Hmm? Okay. There, here, give this to Evelyn. Thank right. you. Tom, okay. do you want to start the video? Okay. Again, on behalf of the city of Hawthorne and for all of those that participated, thank you so much. Look forward to doing it again next year. Yes. 
I forgot to mention, Mayor attended, Danny attended. Um, thank you for your support, City Attorney, um, and Jim Mitch, thank you for your participation and for the city uh, employees that helped in, um, in the setup and breakdown. Appreciate that greatly. This was uh, last year's, um, it was our seventh annual Teen Challenge car show, which brought in over 10,000 people to the city of Hawthorne. But unfortunately, as of yesterday, we thought there was a possibility to go forward with it. But um, due to circumstances, um, some city initiated, some economy initiated, um, this, the car show will be canceled this year. Um, just the cost for the city has just thrown us out of the ballpark. Uh, permits, delays, um, sponsors. Uh, so unless there's a miracle that happens between now and the next month, uh, as of today, uh, we decided to pull the plug on the car show. So um, if anybody can come up with some good ideas, but I spoke with Pastor Cookus at length, and you want to talk about a broken man and his heart's broken, but it's just the expenses just don't even merit the work we have to put into it. And last year we were crippled with just the cost. So um, we were all excited to show this video tonight to promote it. But the last minute we uh, finally had to uh, pull the plug. So maybe next year. Miss English, uh, LA Up, are you holding that for the next council meeting? I want to request that this be postponed to the next council meeting. Okay. Council Member Wars, you have a proclamation. Yes thank, you. yes, thank you, Mayor. You know, when uh, when people look at, you know, what city that they want to live in, they usually look at what the quality of life is. And they look at many factors, including schools, um, uh, the services provided by the city, uh, city staff, neighbors, clean neighborhoods, sewers, all kinds of stuff. But one thing that they, I know for sure they look at, and that is youth sports. Uh, tonight, uh, we have um, a group of dedicated, hardworking uh, individuals who took the bull by the horns and decided to start a new youth league uh, in the city of Hawthorne. And if I can ask uh, uh, the president, Ray Fiofan, to please come to the podium. Uh, when, when Ray was talking on opening day uh, on uh, why he did what he did, 
certainly a little bit of I did this because of my girls, but at the end of his little talk, he said, all of these young ladies are my girls. And you could see the, the love that all of these folks have for him uh, and the entire board for what they did. And uh, I would like to read a, a proclamation. A proclamation honoring the inaugural season of the Hawthorne Weisburn, Weisburn Girls Softball League. Whereas the people of Hawthorne are pleased to join with the families and many volunteers of the Hawthorne Weisburn Girls Softball League as they prepare to launch their first season with the Amateur Software Association, ASA. Under the direction of League President Ray Viafon and the hardworking board of directors, volunteer coaches and supporters, more than 150 girls ages 5 to 14 will learn the fundamentals of softball while developing character, teamwork skills, and good sportsmanship in a safe and structured environment. And since being established in 1933, the ASA has become the governing body for organized amateur softball for youth and adults and has grown from a few hundred teams nationwide to more than 250,000 teams today, representing more than 4 million competitors. Now, therefore, the Hawthorne City Council formally recognize and congratulate the families, volunteers, coaches, and followers of the Hawthorne Wiseman Girls Software League as they begin the start of this important and much-needed athletic program for our young adults. Proclaimed this day, the 22nd of February, 2011, signed by the members of the City Council. This is my youngest one here, uh, Brianna. Um, like Danny said, uh, you know, it's it's a, a group of us got together a few years back, and uh, uh, the need for a fall program was out there. Um, we used to have to travel to other cities to be able to participate in the fall program for girls. Um, so little by little, one parent at a time, they they started to come up, and uh, uh, as a group. Uh, we started off with one team three years ago. Uh, the following year, we moved up to four teams. Last fall, we had 11 total teams, so we had enough um, enough need out there in, in, in our community to go ahead and, and, and start a league. Um, but of course, I, there's no way that uh, I could have done this by myself, so I would really like to introduce my board to you all. Um, some of them are not here. They're over at our fields taking care of the rest of our kids, which uh, they're, they're having practice tonight. Um, but uh, first off, uh, this is one, one of the main players uh, on my board. Uh, without him, the doors would have never been opened to us. And he's the one that first opened up that gate and said, here are the fields, uh, take use to them and uh, uh, put them to good use. Uh, my vice president, Jerry Contreras. I have uh, my secretary is uh, Maribel Navarro. Great, great. Can you speak into the microphone? That way yeah. people can hear you. <laughs> I'm not used to uh, public speaking, as you can see. <laughs> my job's out on the field. Uh, my auxiliary uh, snack stand person is uh, Sandy Ludman. Her house is also doubled as her board meeting place, our, our barbecue place, and all the gatherings are at her place, so Sandy Ledman. Uh, my high school commissioner is Jose Aguilar. Okay. During the regular season, um, our girls are, are busy with CIF, so they're not allowed to play in, in, um, in rec ball, 
but in the fall season, we do have, uh, this last fall we had a total of three high school teams, and that includes most of the uh, high schools around Hawthorne, including uh, uh, Losinger, Lawndale, and uh, Hawthorne High School. Um, our eight and under commissioner is uh, Javier, Javier Villegas. Javier played ball with me when we were 10 years old. <laughs> uh, my 14 and under commissioner is Mike Torrey. Uh, Twelve and under commissioner, uh, Luis Rios. Our 10 and under commissioner is Armando Casillas. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make it today. He's also my assistant coach, and he's taking care of our girls right now. Our T-ball commissioner is uh, also Javier Villegas. <laughs> Some of us have two or three roles in, on, on our board. Um, as we grow, I'm sure that there's going to be more, uh, more participation in our board. Uh, this guy here, uh, he's my right-hand man when it comes to doing work. Uh, we've gotten to know the, um, most of the staff over at Hawthorne High. They know us as the guys with the white truck. Um, pretty much let them do what they're doing. And uh, the guy that's along with me all the time is uh, Mr. John Ledman. And, uh, well, that's me again. <laughs> I'm also the umpire in chief. <laughs> uh, our safety officer and special events coordinator is uh, Brenda Rodriguez. And as our, as our league got started, um, we, we had a, a couple that came into our system and uh, just started giving us great ideas. Uh, they're longtime supporters of Hawthorne High School, and uh, they, they brought uh, forth to our table many, many good ideas and uh, also a, an, an extra helping hand. And uh, it's uh, Robert and Heather Clokey. They're our honorary board members. Heather's husband is, is also another one of my assistant coaches, which are at the field. Uh, so uh, on behalf of uh, Hawthorne Weisburn Girls Softball League, I really want to thank the city of Hawthorne and especially Danny for being at our opening day ceremonies. Uh, meant a lot to us. And um, all, we, all, all we received was nothing but, but kudos and feedback, good feedback um, for the fact that you were there and, and, you, and you gave that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the, the, the speech that, that, that gave us that extra fire that we needed to, uh, to get this uh, league on the road. And uh, uh, personally, I want to thank the city of Hawthorne for giving our girls a place of their own. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, a presentation here by Connecta Credit Union. Yeah. Yeah, this way you guys can give your presentation now and you don't have to stay for the whole meeting if you don't want to. So you're welcome to come up to the microphone. No, they're, they're here. It's under... Um, Presentation. presentation. Council members' discussion action items. It's it's a presentation, and Mr. Mal Calloway is going to do a um, presentation yeah, on the. Um, this is the second time around that they're doing this <coughs> presentation, so I'm going to request the presentation. However, I don't I don't want any um, action taken. Uh, I would like the presentation, and then once the presentation is over with, I'll give further direction. Well, first of all, good evening, and uh, I'd like to thank the City Council for having me back yet again and to talk about um, a new project that we got started here in Hawthorne that we're quite excited about. And um, as uh, Ms. English said, I uh, presented this about two months ago, and I wanted to come back and, uh, you know, present it once again to give more clarity on exactly what we're trying to do and how we want to work with the City of Hawthorne. So um, first I'll start out by... Um, 
telling you a little bit about Connect the Federal Credit Union. Um, you might recognize this gentleman in the picture here. This is Howard Hughes, and for some of you in the South Bay, you probably recognize the South, the, um, this uh, spruce goose that's there. Um, Connect the Federal Credit Union was uh, founded in 1940, and we started out as Hughes Aircraft Employees Federal Credit Union. And currently, we are the 17th largest credit union in the nation, and we're the sixth largest in the state of California, and we're the number one uh, credit union in Los Angeles County as far as size. We're about $3.4 billion. Um, we have over 220,000 members at Connecta. And uh, the thing that we're excited about is that as we have moved forward with our history, we've also moved forward with the history along with the city of Hawthorne. Um, in 2000, in, in 1992, um, at the time, Hughes Credit Union, which is now Connecticut Credit Union, joined with the Hawthorne City's Federal Credit Union. And we've had a 19-year relationship uh, with the city of Hawthorne as a result of that. Um, during that merger, we had a lot of the firemen, a lot of the policemen that were members of the credit union. They uh, since became members of the Connecticut Credit Union, as well as some of you as city councilmen have accounts with uh, the Connecticut Federal Credit Union. Um, the uh, relationship started um, really um, in 1992, as I said, but we also had another uh, great experience in working with the city of Hawthorne. Uh, for Connected, we had our first in-store location, which was in the Aversons Market there. We opened that in uh, 2000, and as most of you know, um, in October 2010, we moved into our new location over, and if you haven't been over, please go see it. Um, it's a brand new facility, and uh, we're very proud of it. But uh, we've had a long-time relationship with the city of Hawthorne, um, which started with uh, their own credit union. Then in uh, 2007, we had a landmark acquisition where we uh, purchased Nick's check cashing. And the sole purpose of purchasing Nick's check cashing was to give the underbanked and the underserved an opportunity to have the same products and services as offered to credit union members and to offer that with them so they don't have to pay the absorbent fees to get their checks cashed, to get money orders, and all the things that, uh, and all the fees that's associated with the check cash. And that was the primary purpose behind Connecta purchasing Nick's check cashing. And uh, since then, uh, we have, uh, you know, changed the name from Nick's check cashing to Nick's financial because that's exactly what we wanted it to be. We wanted it to be a uh, organization that um, people can come to, feel good about coming to, and we can offer them the credit union products and services. Now, I said this was a landmark acquisition, and as you can see on the slide, we have had quite a few um, people across the country that's really looking at this model that we're trying to put in place at Hawthorne. Uh, we were written up in the New York Magazine. Um, also, we had a uh, banking relationship with, uh, uh, Nick's had a banking relationship with Union Bank for over seven years. We were also written up in the Social Innovation Magazine out of Stanford. And then the one that we really looked at here is from the American Banker. For the bankers to write about a credit union and what we're doing, um, we really uh, know that that's something innovative that we're doing. The one that we are most excited about is that you see the Harvard logo there. Harvard has been doing a case study on this model that we want to do in Hawthorne for the last uh, three years. And each year our president of uh, Connected goes back to Harvard and they continue to go through the case study on this. And the reason that this is such a big thing for Harvard is because no one has been able to figure out how do you get the underserved and the underbanked back into using the financial services. And the banks have walked away from it because they can't figure out how to make money on it. So, you know, everybody is kind of watching how are you going to do this, how are you going to make this model work. And I've had uh, four or five institutions from New York as well as the Midwest to come out and look at the model that we are uh, trying to put in place here in Hawthorne. And after we um, get the model in place, there are going to be a uh, financial institution across the, the country that's going to be wanting to use this same model. And I want to also to point out at the bottom, this is our new logo where it says Connecta and Nick's Financial. That's the new logo. You know, there's nothing on there about check cashing. Uh, we are uh, doing a whole branding campaign where even the Nick's uh, check cashing locations that we have signage up, uh, we're doing a branding campaign to switch that to Nick's Financial. Okay. Um, the other thing that I, and I started talking about this is that we're about financial inclusion. And what that means is that we want to get the underserved and underbanked in and using the credit union products and services. 
I think most of us have had family members or friends who've gone to a bank to open their account, and the first thing that happens, you're on check system. Shut down. You can't open the account. And people walk away because they're on check systems. And what, we're, what we've done at uh, Connective is that we have um, looked at our policies and guidelines regarding check systems, and we've um, rewritten those guidelines to allow the people that have had the misfortune of maybe having one incident on their checking account or savings account and not being able to get back into the financial um, industry and letting them to come back in. We want you to save. We want you to be able to use these products and services. Um, and the other thing is that we have nine locations right now that are NICs and connector where we had a hybrid. You know, you have the NICs right on one side and you have the connector on the other side. And what we're doing is that we're converting those check cashers into credit union members so that they can use the services. Um, by the end of April, we hope to have 12 of the new connected NICs location. And of course, our, our goal is to get it to where we have all 49 locations that's going to be connected and NICs financial. And uh, the reason that that didn't happen as soon as we would like to um, after the merger was simply because of what's going on in the economy for the last two years, three years. So um, we are back on track now. We want to get those converted as we go forward. This is the Hawthorne location. Um, this is the front of it. And uh, um, as I said, um, the Aberson's market that we were in, uh, we didn't have enough lobby space and was getting too small, so we built a new center over in, uh, in the uh, shopping center over here. And the thing that we're excited about with this new location is that we want this to be a win-win situation with the city of Hawthorne as well as with Connected to give services to the community of Hawthorne, to give the residents of, of Hawthorne an opportunity to have a new center and to be able to satisfy all of their financial services. As I said, this is going to be, um, this is something that's going to be innovative, it's, it's new, and uh, we're excited about doing this with the city of Hawthorne. Like I said, you know, the first in-store we had was with the city of Hawthorne. You gave us an opportunity to do that, and I think we got an opportunity again to really create a good partnership as we go forward. Um, this is the inside of the new location. If you haven't had an opportunity to go there, please go see it. It's state-of-the-art, um, beautiful color, a lot of lights, um, very, very well lit. The next thing I want to show you, we just have some testimonies of a lot of things that we do in the city of, of uh, Hawthorne already, you know, without, even before that. We work with Ridgestone, you know, and uh, we've gotten a couple of quotes for them. You know, connections involved in organizations like Ridgestone, their investment in local community ensures that the valuable service and opportunities will continue to be afforded to many families. We work with the Drew Ligg Foundation. We've been working with them for a number of years here in the city of Hawthorne. We also work with the uh, Hawthorne Teen Center. We meet with them um, almost, uh, I think, you know, we do meet with them every other Friday. And we've been doing that for a number of years. We have a lot of programs that we do with the teen. We also work with uh, Exminster here in the city of Hawthorne. And, you know, one of the big things we do in the city of Hawthorne is financial education. We work with the Hawthorne High School. Um, we um, work with the seniors as well. You see here in this picture, we have one of our financial consultants. When we had about 100 and some, 170 some seniors to show up for this event. Once again, at the bottom there is the Hawthorne Teen Center, where we're there on, on a biweekly basis. And the Richstone kids that you see here, they actually came down to our corporate headquarters to do a tour of our facilities. So very involved with the city of Hawthorne. This was just some of the giving that we gave during the holidays in, in the city of Hawthorne. You know, we had the Hawthorne President's Council where we had a lot of involvement in that. Uh, we had the city of Hawthorne Project Gobble that we were involved in, uh, St. Margaret's <laughs> Center, and also with the Hawthorne Chamber. We did the food drive, uh, connected, and Nick's donated over um, 200 turkeys for that event. Um, just recently during the holiday season. So what I'm trying to show here is that, you know, we want to have the partnership. We've been a big uh, partner in the city of Hawthorne. We're doing good things in the city of Hawthorne, and we want that to continue as we go forward. These are some of the select employee groups that we uh, work with in, ha in the city of Hawthorne, Costco, and, of course, the city of Hawthorne, OSI, and Burke Environmental, and, uh, uh, and the Dental Care Center as well. So those are just some of the local SEGs that we work with. The other ones were some of the nonprofit groups that we work with. And that's just kind of a recap of, you know, what I presented to you a couple of months ago. But I wanted to come back and, uh, you know, give, give the information to you once again, especially now since we have the new center built. And we're very excited about uh, getting uh, started with uh, bringing the uh, NICS financial in as well. Um, if you go to that new center, what you're going to see is that we do have 
uh, two um, teller stations in one location, and that's so if a Nix customer comes in, they don't have to wait. If a connector member comes in, they don't have to wait. You go to the teller window. If you're doing a Nix transaction, you just go, she just turns to this terminal. She can make that happen. Or if you come in to do a connector, uh, a connector member comes and do a transaction, is just turning to the other terminal and, and being able to do the transaction without having to have two double lines and all that is involved in that. Now, as soon as we can get our IT team up to speed, we're going to get it to where it's just one terminal where we'll have both on the same terminal. But each time that we get a next customer to come in, of course, what we're trying to do with them and want to do with them for all that that's open to that is, you know, you don't have to pay these fees that check cashers charge you. You can join the credit union, and we make it easy for you to join the credit union. So um, in closing, you know, thank you again for the opportunity to come down and speak to you, and uh, I look forward to uh, working with all of you in the future. Angie, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Callaway. If you could just um, stay there for just a few okay. moments. Um, I know at our previous uh, city council meeting, uh, there was concerns uh, trying to understand the operations of Konetka, mm -hmm. uh, who you are and who you've been for several mm -hmm. years now, the inquiring of Next Financial Services, which I had a story. Uh, when I first came to California, mm -hmm. I needed to establish myself and was a Next check cashing individual eventually turned uh, my services into Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. And that was very productive because I, it showed a history of my banking, which allowed me to be able to open Wells Fargo. Right. So I, I understand the importance of providing the financial education uh, in the community. And I wanted to be able for our council members, should there be additional concerns or questions they have, uh, I, I appreciate the time. I, I understand you came a couple months back and we're here today, so I want to be able to fulfill those um, okay. answers uh, sure. with questions. So if there's council members' concerns, if you could please address those to Mr. Calloway. May, may I, uh, Mayor? Yes. Go. Thank you. Thanks for being here again tonight. I Thank you, Ms. Lambert. so much. Um, I'm confused as to why you, your bank, Connecta? Yes. Um, cannot do the ca cashing of checks, must you be a member of your bank in order to come in and cash a check? Is that what your problem is with that? The way that we have this set up um, is that you can cash checks at Connecta. Um, if you uh, become a member, you can cash your check and you can cash your check without a fee. Okay. And currently what we have with Nick's Financial, if you come in to cash a check, there is a charge for cashing that check. And with, as I, with Nick, with Nick's or whatever with you Nick's, call it. there is a charge to cash a check. Do with you know Nick's. what that charge is? Yeah, it's a uh, two point one for every um, every thousand on it. Okay, and and you're saying you don't charge anything? What I said is that you know if you come to Nick's and you if you just go to one of the Nick's locations, you will be charged to cash your check. If you go to a connected Nick's where we have the hybrid, like we're doing in in Hawthorne, I said we have nine other hybrids. What will happen when you come in to cash your check? If you're a Nick's customer, what we will say is that, you know, you don't have to pay these fees to keep getting your check cash. Join the credit union. Become a member of the credit union. And once you become a member of a credit union, you can bring your checks in and you can just deposit it without having to pay a fee. So it's an education process and a transition process we're going through. When you say become a member, you're talking mm -hmm. about become a member of Connecta? Yes, become a member of Connecta. So why do they need that? check cashing place then. Well, they start yeah. out at, what, what we have too is that we have um, about 14,000 NICS customers that have a Hawthorne address. Thank and currently, they're going to other communities to cash their checks and they're doing business with other communities because they can't cash their check for whatever reason because they're not a member of a credit union. And what we're saying is that the 14,000 that we have, we want to convert them over to become connect the credit union members. And once they become credit union members, they don't have to pay to cash their checks. They can just walk right across the street, walk in, deposit there, check into the account just like everyone else does without having to go through and pay the fee and without having uh, all the expenses of, of going to a check casher. So that's exactly what we're trying to do is to get them away from having to pay those fees. Because currently if they go to a NICS or if they go to an ACE, they're going to have to pay to get their check cashed. Okay, but but I, I think I understood you to say that right now if they go to this 
NICS or whatever that is, they still have to pay a fee. They will have Correct. to pay a fee. Do they have to be a member of something in order to? No, they don't have to be. They, what they'll be is they'll be a customer of NICS. When they come in, they have a customer, they have a customer oh, identification them, card. Okay. They and pay yeah, for when they, that, right? Well, we give them that free. Oh, they get okay. that custom ID card free. So when they come in and they have a custom ID card from NICS and they said, I want to cash my check, we identify who they are, uh -huh. and then, you know, we can cash their check. Uh -huh. But in the, what we're trying to do in Hawthorne is that when they do come in and they say, well, I'm with NICS and here's my ID card, I want to cash my check, we're saying, you know, that's great, we can do that for you. But did you know that you can join the credit union and we can open well, up a membership for you? That's a part that I don't understand. I, I mean, I'm trying to say to myself, mm -hmm. what do you need NICS for? You're there, you can do all those functions, you can borrow money, you can buy a home, you can do all those things. And why are you not offering that same thing to them without having... Because you have to become sort of a member to, in order for us to, you know, uh, cash your checks and do all that, you have to become a member. And that's the advantage of a credit union owning a check cashers. The other check cashers can't do that. But because we are a credit union and we are um, regulated by the NCUA, then we can make you a member. And that's the whole piece of this is that, you know, you have to become that member to join a credit union. You know, I, I walked by there or drove by there the mm -hmm. other day and... Um, uh, I, I don't mean to m make this disparaging at all, but it, it seemed like m most of the people that hung around there oh. were not um, of this citizenry in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, do you find yourself catering to um, uh, those that are not citizens? Because uh, that's, what I, uh, that's what I viewed uh, the other day. Um... I'm not really sure how to answer that question straight without forward. being offensive. <laughs> um, That's a straight right. question. Yeah, we we through, through the chair. Would, would it be okay? Yeah. Did you want to oh, continue with that? He's answering a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. What we do is that all of our NICS customers they have uh, customer identifications, and what that means is they either have a social security number or they have an ITN number. They have a what kind of they number? Have an, it's called an I-10 number, which so they can register to do their taxes. It's called an I-10 number. You're not answering my question, though. Are mm -hmm. they American citizens? They are American citizens. All of them that come to you, those that hang well, around out there that I've seen. All the they, ones that we have as customers probably are citizens of the U.S. Okay. I can't, which ones are not? No, I don't know if I can answer that. So that's why I'm not trying to avoid asking your question, but that's a very delicate question to try to well, answer. Well, it's a delicate question, but, but you know, all you have to do is drive by there and, and you can see the clutter of... Uh, well, and I don't know if they're all around our location either because there's a bus stop there and there's also yeah, a beauty salon. Right. So I can't speak for all the businesses around us, but for the ones that's coming into the connected location, uh, you know, we are, you know, getting their identification. We've identified them. But, you know, if they are a citizen or not, I, you know. Well, you would know that if, if, if they came in to, to uh, uh, check cancel, uh, excuse me, check. cash <laughs> right. a check. The, the thing that's, that bothers me a lot about uh, all of this is that uh, I had a, um, a long, long letter from one of the uh, supervisors here in, in um, California, and uh, he showed me um, a list of contributions by this public, these taxpayers, paying money for food stamps, food stamps and checks given to the illegals by our taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And that was in the millions and millions and millions of dollars. I don't have the letter with me tonight. I had it two weeks ago. So there's something that is not right. Somehow we're supporting them, and even maybe you are cashing their checks. God knows where they get them. I don't know. Uh, th uh, through the chair, could I answer, ask a couple questions? Or? Well, I guess you don't want him to answer then. Well, I don't, well, know. I don't know if he wants to. <laughs> so. uh, as I said... All of the customers that we have on NICS, they have the identification. They've either given us a Social Security card or they have an I-10 number. So you're For saying they're not illegals? Is as, that what you're as telling As far us? as we know, they are not illegals. Okay, go ahead. As far as we know, they're not illegals. Okay. Um, through the chair. Okay. 
So what you're doing is you're changing the name from Nix Check Cashing to Nix Financial. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So what are the services that Nix Check Cashing has at the moment? Um, at Nix Check Cashing, of course, you can come and cash your check. At a you fee? Can, for a fee, right? Yes, for a fee. You can get a Connect Express prepaid card. Mm -hmm. that, and with the Connect Express prepaid card, it serves as a checklist checking account. Because what you can do, you can put direct deposit on your Connect Express card. You can also do bill pay off the Connect Express card. And you can also use it as a form of identification because it has the Visa logo on it. And it's accepted in most places that Visa and MasterCard accepted. And the thing that it also does, it keeps the um, underserved and the underbanked from having to have cash in their pocket, pockets. They load everything onto the car, and it's a safe way for them to do their business. Okay, so basically, the next check, you're basically taking a next check cashing facility and putting it inside the Connect, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so next check cashing or, or next financial, aka next financial, or next check cashing, right? Right. Okay, so that includes payday loans as well? Right. And does that include like fax and copy services? We do have postage stamps, envelopes, yes. anything you would find at a regular check cashing location that's next check cashing solely, correct? Right. Okay, you said you had six of them. You said you had nine of them. I only right. saw six on your website. Um, I think you have three in South Central, one in Carson, one in Lancaster, another one in Highland Park. Where are the three new locations that you have? We have one that's at uh, that's in in uh, Watts at, at number four, and I'll give you the addresses. Just hold on for a minute. The uh, newest one that was added is at uh, 11121 South Crenshaw Boulevard in Inglewood. And then the other one that we added was at uh, uh, 121 South Long Beach. Mm -hmm. And What city is that, sir? That is in the city of Compton. Oh, Compton. Compton. And then we have one more that we've added recently. And then we have one that's on Crenshaw and Imperial. Okay, so did you have a Nix Financial or Nix Check Cashing at the old Albertsons location? No, we did. Okay, so what you want to do is bring the Nix Check Cashing, Nix Financial into the new location. Right. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay. The chair. How you doing, Mr. Holloway? Hello. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I have a couple questions. Okay. Um, what's the you, you talked about that when when someone walks to that door, and if they're not a Connecta member, mm -hmm. uh, they can use the Nick service. Yes. Uh, so, uh, what is the criteria for becoming a Connecta member? To become a Connecta member, you have to have proper identification, and we ask you to put five dollars into a savings account, and that will get you to your membership. So, so it's not a lot of money, and, no. and certainly uh, many of the people that walk through those doors have what you're asking for. Yes. Uh, of the people that you asked to convert over to Nix, what's been the success ratio? We've had about two out of every ten that would convert to the credit union. And, and, is, and is there a reason why the other eight out of ten decide just to be a Nix customer? Some have had a bad experience with a bank, and some are still on check systems, and some just feel more comfortable in knowing that they don't have to worry about overdraft fees or fees on an account. Like I said, they'll come in and get their Connect Express card, they'll load their money on that, and it allows them to do all of their banking, and they're able to do it without having to worry about fees and that. So some just elect to, I just want to keep my banking simple. On a card. Yeah. <laughs> Heaven forbid if they lose that card. Well, we can replace it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so, so you have to use a code when you swipe it, then you, you have to use a code? It. Right. Excellent. Right. Uh, let's see. Um, at the end of the day, when you rack and stack all of your, the funds that come into the bank, does it, do, do you count it as, as one sum, or, or do you keep separate sums, you know, separate balances? Well, currently, at the Hawthorne location, we would keep separate balances. We would keep the funds. We wouldn't co-mingle the funds. Okay. And uh, at, at some point in time, once this branding service uh, or this branding um, adventure uh, takes off and you've reached that point, will you move to one terminal 
or, or you, will you continue to have two terminals? We, we're going to move to one terminal. As I said before, right now, um, you know, it's, um, it's... It's up to your IT guys? It's up to the IT Is there a timeline for that? Well, as soon as we get approval, um, that's going to be one of the number one priorities they're going to start working on. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. To the chair. Mr. Callaway, can you also um, confirm the, a couple of my questions? Um, you are a federal credit union, correct? Yes. You are secured through the um, banking... We are secured through the NCUA, which is equivalent to the FDIC for commercial banks. Correct. You operate just like any other bank does, correct? Yes, that's correct. Is it also correct that there's banks that provide a service charge for members uh, that are not non-members, say, for instance, Union Bank, Wells Fargo Bank, yes. Bank of America, yes. and on and on. If yes. you're not a member, you will be charged for cashing your check there, correct? That is correct. And on another note, the next financial services, again, was purchased by Connecticut. That's correct. And how long, again, have you been Connecticut Federal Credit Union? We've been in business for 70 years. And we started out as Hughes Aircrafts. And Nick's uh, check cashing has been in business for 44 years. Which you have employees from the city of Hawthorne. That includes the police department, civil service employees, L.A. County Fire Department, and et cetera, civil service employees, correct? Yes, we do. We have all of those. You also, from what I understand, provide a community service to the community, which is basically community education and community benefits through various services that you made mention today, including services to our seniors, services to our young adults, yes. and educating them, provided assistance to the needy with turkey giveaways and um, food vouchers at local grocery stores. Yes, we've been very instrumental in that for a number of years. Okay. And with regards, with all fairness, and I apologize, you know, if there was some um, questions that were a little sensitive, uh, it's not, I believe, your duties to inquire on whether or not folks are illegal or not. It's not. Uh, I believe that if individuals are able to open a bank account, they have to provide some form of ID. That is correct. I also understand when they file their taxes, they have to be able to form give some type of ID, whether it be Social Security card uh, and or a, uh, what was it, a 1040? Is it a 1040 it's, it's identification, number? identification number? Identification number. Mm -hmm. You provide full banking service, which includes mortgage loans, car loans, um, college loans. Student loans. Student loans. Yeah. I just want to make clear that you're a bona fide financial institution, a bank, providing a service which isn't going to change. You're going to continue to do business anyhow, right? whether you're approved or not. We will continue to do business. Um, okay. And we, you know, we, as I said before, we're looking to partner with the city of Hawthorne because this is a new model way of doing business, and it's being looked at across the nation. Correct. Yeah. And so that everyone understands you're moving from Albertsons across the street to a larger location, which is at the corner of Rosecrans and El Segundo, yes. because of the uh, double or maybe triple members that are now patronizing Connecticut and our members and full service banking. Um, has been instrumental for the request to make that move and obviously with approval from the management across the street, who also agreed to um, red curb the location where I had asked to facilitate through our city manager and that uh, management to assure that we have a, a flow of cars going through without interruption and stopping. So it's my understanding that the management has agreed to either red curb or provide signage so that we could then enforce if we need to. Is that correct? Yes, the management has agreed to that. And in fact, their facilities uh, department has been working directly with them. And uh, the curb is going to be painted red. The curb will be painted red by the end of the week. Perfect. 
I also want to make clear that um, moving forward, that the purpose for the city of Hawthorne uh, amending existing language is for the purposes to provide the bona fide financial institution, Connecticut, full banking services through inquiring now next financial services customers who will eventually go away right. and will be Connecticut. And I want to make clear that we don't have a system that's in place in Connecticut which would be intentional uh, of nature, but solely because of IT issues in-house that have to be rectified. That is correct. Okay. I'm going back through all this again, just to be clear and to make no mistake, mm -hmm. whether it be a second time, third time, et cetera, I'm gonna to continue to push this because it's important. And I don't want any misleading information or other to be said to try and manipulate something that isn't. Thank you. So I'm gonna ask, um, City Attorney, is is there anything further here that I need to do? Um, and I think if there's any more questions or anything else that needs to be said, to please uh, allow the time for Mr. Calloway to answer those before I ask him um, to take his seat. Through the chair. Um, sir. Yes. Um, if you did not have the NICS check cashing operation, NICS financial operation, Will you still be offering student loans to yes. through yes. members? Yes. Will you still be offering checking accounts? Yes. Savings accounts? Yes. You'll still be checking, uh, cashing checks for the members, correct? We will have checks cashed still for the connected members. And most importantly, will you still continue being an active member of our community? We will still be an active com uh, member of the community, okay. yes. Do you have any plans on opening up a... Uh, combined NICS financial, NICS check cashing operation in any of our beach cities or in Torrance? Um, do we have, we have them in... Do we have one at the Manhattan Beach office? We don't have one at the okay. Manhattan Beach office, but we are going to be doing one in the Gardena area. Okay, thank you. Okay. Chair, is there any further um, questions or concerns from the council? Thank you, Mr. Calloway. Thank you very much, and thank you to the council. Thank you. Okay. Um, this item doesn't come up till later. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, would you please read the guidelines for oral, oral communications, please? Any person desiring to address the City Council Community Redevelopment Agency Parking Authority and Housing Authority should complete a speaker request card and submit the card to the City Clerk prior to the commencement of the meeting. After obtaining permission to proceed by the presiding officer, speakers should first state their full name and address for the record. They then shall state their business for all governing bodies briefly and completely, and unless uh, granted further time, by a governing body shall limit their address to five minutes. The five minute limit shall include governing body or staff responses to queries posted by speakers. However, the state open meetings law, government code section 54950 prohibits the city council from providing a detailed response or acting upon any item not contained on the agenda posted 72 hours before a regular meeting or 24 hours before a special meeting all remarks shall be addressed to the governing body as a body and not to any particular member thereof. The governing body may either dispose of the communication at the uh, close thereof.